If we look at a function that is um, a binomial like this, x minus 4 quantity squared, again, that would be the quantity of x minus 4 times the quantity of x minus 4. When we would multiply this out, we would get x squared minus ax plus 16. So my question is, is how can we get from the negative 8 to the positive 16 using our beginning here? Well, if we take negative 8 and we divide that by 2, we get back the 4 that we had in our original problem here. Well, how would I get from 4, negative 4 to a positive 16? Well, then I would take the negative 4 that I got down here and I would square it to get to 16. Okay? So, if I gave you something like x squared minus 12x plus 36. We know that that would be x minus 6 and x minus 6. So to get from the negative 12 that we got up here as our b, we would divide that by 2, get a negative 6, which is what we have here, square that, and we would get a positive 36, which would give us the positive 36 in our trinomial. In chapter 7, we learned how to solve an equation that had this type of format where we have a perfect square on the left hand side and then number, another number on the right hand side. The process of solving for x was to undo that square which is the square root. So we need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root and the square would cancel and then the x minus 4 would drop and we would get the square root of 8. Then to solve for x we would have to add 4 to both sides. By doing that we get x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 and that's how we would solve for each of our our x's. So to solve for the first x we would take x equals 4 plus the square root of 8 and get our answer and then we would take x equals 4 minus the square root of 8 because again when we take the square root of a number, there is a positive value and a negative value. When we stick those into our calculators, we get these two different values. Again, I would round these to do about at least two decimal places, so this would be 6.83 and this would be 1.17. Okay, as we see in this example right here, this is a trinomial that does not have a perfect square here in our c value. In order to solve this by um, using the same process as we did over here on the right hand side, we have to change that, tri that trinomial into a product of two binomials that are identical so that we can change it into this right here, a quantity squared function. So in order to do this, we need to complete the square. In order to complete the square, your a, the coefficient out front of your x squared, needs to be a positive 1, and in this case it is. I will do an example where the coefficient is a negative 1 and how to do that. So to be, to, to, to be able to do this, we have to take our b, and we have to make sure that our new c, or our perfect square, corresponds with the value in our b spot. So in order to do that, I have to move this 37 to the other side. What's going to happen is I'm going to replace that 37 with another value. But I still have to keep in consideration that the 37 is part of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 37 to both sides of my equation. So I get x squared minus 10x blank equals a negative 37. Okay? So like we were doing in the video before, or in the segment before, we were taking our b value. Okay, We take our b, which equals a negative 10. We divide it by 2, and we get a negative 5. And then we square it to get a positive 25. Okay, So you always divide your b value by 2, and then you square it. 
and that will give you your new C value. So this positive 25 is going to go here with our C value. And if we notice now, this can be factored out to a identical pair of binomials. But we have to consider, okay, I just added a 25 to the left-hand side. So we have to keep the balance of this equation a little bit balanced here. So if I add 25 to the left-hand side, I have to add 25 to the right-hand side. So again, keeping that balance, we're all about balancing equations in algebra. So on the left-hand side, I can rewrite this as x minus 5 quantity squared. And then on the left-hand side, I can write this as a negative, what are we going to get? 12. Okay. So I have my equation set up here. I have the quantity x minus 5 squared minus equals a negative 12. So we need to solve for x, and on this case, we take the square root of both sides. So we get x minus 5 equals the square root of negative 12. We learned in our chapter 7 that I can rewrite this as 2i square root of 3, because again, the square root of 4 is 2, but since we have a negative inside, the square root, we get an i. Square root of 3. Now make sure, since we're taking the square root, this should be the positive and negative value of 2i square root of 3. And then to finish this off, we would add 5 to both sides to get our final answer of x equals... You could put the 5 out front, 5 plus or minus... 2i square root of 3. It's okay to leave it in the tail end also. But in order to get both of our equations, again, you would do one process with 5 plus 2i square root of 3, then 5 minus 2i square root of 3. But since we have an i here, this is good to go. Okay, in this equation here, we see that we have a trinomial that does not have a perfect square here in our third spot, our C spot. Our coefficient, which is our A, is a negative 1. Again, I can't work this equation out with a negative coefficient out front in my A spot, so therefore I need to change that by multiplying everything by a negative 1. By doing that, I get x squared minus 6x minus 7 equals 0, because again, a negative 1 times 0 is 0. I need to move my c value to the other side, so by adding it to both sides, so I get x squared minus 6x blank plus 7, or equals a positive 7. Okay. So I need to complete the square. I take my b value, which is a negative 6, I divide it by 2, which is a negative 3, and I square it, which gives me a positive 9. So this becomes my new c value. But again, if I add 9 to the left-hand side, I have to add 9 to the right-hand side. So again, this is just our work, so we can ignore that for right now. I need to factor my trinomial, which is the quantity x minus 3 quantity squared equals 16 on the left hand side because 7 plus 9 is 16. Then I need to solve for x. So to do so, I have to take the square root of both sides. So I get x minus 3 equals positive and negative 4. And then to get x by itself, I have to add 3 to both sides. Okay, so x equals 3 plus or minus 4. Okay, so that means that I have to do two separate problems. I have to do x equals 3 plus 4 and x equals 3 minus 4. So on the first one I get 7, on the second one I get negative 1. So these would be my two values that satisfy those equations, or my two x values, my two x intercepts. So this was solving by completing the square.
One other way that you can solve trinomials or quadratic equations for x values is by using the quadratic formula. So if we look at this one here, x squared minus 3x plus 4, we would think about factors of 4, which are 4 and 1, and 2 and 2. Now they have to add up, remember it's a plus, it has to add up to a negative 3. And if we look at those 2 and 2 and three, 4 and 1, excuse me, none of those add up to a negative 3. So back in chapter 5, we would say that this was prime. They were not factorable. But they are solvable because we can use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula works for every trinomial as long as, again, it's a quadratic, meaning that it has a squared function here. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, this is the quadratic formula. It shows you that so the formula says x equals, and this will help you solve for your two values of your quadratic formula. Again, notice the plus and minus that we get when we take a square root. This um, quadratic formula is worked out for you on page 503. It takes a standard quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and it solves it for x. Due to time, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the formula. Formula is here, negative b plus or minus the square root of all of this, b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Sometimes it's a little bit helpful to have a song or a jingle to keep this in your memory. Um, this is the only time you're going to hear me sing. Um, so there's a little jingle that goes with this online. I'm sure you can find other ones. Um, but in a class, I usually have you repeat after me. But um, a lot of people find this helpful to memorize this formula. So here it goes. Negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's the formula. So if you want to memorize the jingle, please do so. But again, this is another way to solve an equation for a quadratic that cannot be factored. Back to our example, we again have talked about this, how it's not factorable, so the only place that we can do this is either we can complete the square or we can use the quadratic formula. A lot of people like using the quadratic formula because there's it's more plug and chug for them and they like doing plug and chug. So in here, the best thing to do is to kind of give yourself a key. So off to the side, I would do A, B, and C and kind of keep a record of what all your values are. So looking at our equation here, um, our a is 1, negative 3 is b, and c is 4. Okay, Make sure that you take the sign that is in the equation. If you don't take the sign with it, then this formula will drop out, meaning that it won't work and you'll get a wrong answer. Okay, So we're going to start with our equation, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now we're going to chug or plug in our values into here. Make sure that you use parentheses because again I see a negative b here. I do have to put the negative down but our b value is a negative 3, so do you see how there could be a problem there if you drop a sign? Okay, b again is a negative 3, I'm going to square that. Minus 4, a is 1, c is 4, all over 2 times 1, because that's our a. Okay. And then we chug. Since we have everything plugged, we chug, which means that we simplify this using order of operations until we get it down to the nitty gritty. So I get a positive 3 plus or minus the square root of positive 9 minus 16, okay, all over 2. So I keep going. 3 plus or minus the square root of a negative 7 all over 2. Okay. So this is where we have simplified it as far as it can go and I need to simplify this into two parts. So I rewrite this into two parts. 
or actually I can't rewrite it into two parts. So this is where I need to simplify it and so I can rewrite this as 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 7 over 2. Okay, Because again 7 we can't take the square root of but there is a negative inside of the square root so this would be our final answer here. Here's another example of a quadratic that we're going to solve for the value of r. So again, I would write down your a, b, and c so you know exactly what your values are. In this problem, our a is negative 3, b is a positive 4, and r is a positive 2. So we write down our formula, x equals a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 how do I memorize that? Again, just practice. Okay, negative our b is 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4. Our a is negative 3 and our c is 2. Okay, all divided by 2a, a is negative 3 again. Okay. Negative 4 plus or minus, now we're going to chug, we're going to work this all out. 16, negative 4 times the negative 3 is a positive 12. Positive 12 times 2 is a positive 24. All divided by a negative 6. Okay. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 40 all divided by a negative 6. Okay, so we've combined everything that we can, but we need to simplify this radical. So again, 40 would be 4 times 10. 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 4 is 2. So a 2 is going to come out. The 10 has to stay inside, and I have a negative 6. Can I simplify this? Yes, I can. Do not, I repeat, do not just start canceling. We so we need to go ahead and factor out. Let's factor out a negative 2. So if we factor out a negative 2, we get a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of 10, all divided by a negative 6. And then by doing that, I can cross cancel or cancel from the numerator and denominator, and I get those two negatives also cancel out. I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 10 all over 3. Okay, so to find your two x values, you would need to rewrite this as two different x's. So x equals 2, sorry, plus the square root of 10 over 3, and then x equals 2 minus the square root of 10 over 3 and calculate those two values out to at least two decimal places. Okay. Okay, you gotta throw in an application problem, a word problem. I know how you guys love these. So a motorboat travels 16 miles with a 6 mile per hour current and then turns around to the starting point going against the current. If the entire trip lasted two hours, find the speed of the motorboat in still water. So again, we have to go back to chapter 6 and draw out a table and sticker information in. The DR is for downriver, okay, so that would be with the current, and UR is upriver, which is against the current. Remember that we have to do this one a little bit different. Okay, T is going to equal D divided by R, the distance divided by the rate. So distance, well it told us that one way was 16 miles, and then the, that means that on the way back it has to be 16 miles. It says that with the current, so we're going to put X plus 6, that's still water with a current of 6 miles an hour, and upriver would be against the current, so that's going to be x minus 6. 
To t find our time for each of these, we have to take distance divided by the rate. So this is going to be 16 divided by x plus 6 and 16 divided by x minus 6. Okay, so that's our table. We need to make sure that in our problem, the first part is that we identify our variables. So the x is going to be speed of still water. Okay. Then we need to come up with an equation for our work here. And so we need to say that the, the time for downriver and the time for upriver have a sum of two hours. So that's our second part. So B is going to be downriver plus upriver has to equal total time. Okay, so time for downriver again is 16 divided by x plus 6 plus the upriver which is 16 over x minus 6 and this has to be 2 for 2 hours. Okay. This looks like a problem that we did in chapter 7 where we have a rational um, equation. So our LCD in this case is going to be x plus 6 and x minus 6. Okay. okay, this means that I have to multiply each element or each term by the common denominator which is x minus 6 and x plus 6 x minus 6, x plus 6, and this one is x minus 6 and x plus 6. Don't really have a fine tip on this marker. Hope you guys can see that looks a little sloppy from here. I apologize. So the x plus 6 and the x plus 6 cancel, and I'm left with 16 times the quantity x minus 6 from the first term. The x minus 6 cancels with the x minus 6. And I have to multiply the 16 by the x plus 6. And then on this one, I have to take both of these, multiply them together, and multiply them by the 2. So x plus 6 and x minus 6. It's again, that was not a ratio, so therefore I have to um, multiply both of those together by the 2. Okay. I've rewritten the equation so that I have more space on my board. I need to go ahead and distribute. So if I multiply this out, I get 16x minus 96 plus 16x plus 96 equals. Over here, I have got two binomials that are multiplied together, identical. One has a positive sign, one has a negative sign. So that's going to give me a difference of squares which is going to be x squared minus 36. I can redistribute the 2 so that I get 2x squared minus 72. Okay. On the left hand side I notice that my negative 96 and my positive 96 are going to cancel and I get 32x. In order to solve for x here I need to move the 32 to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 32x on both sides. So I have 0 equals 2x squared minus 32x minus 72. I need to solve this for x, so I need to um, simplify this because I notice each of these are even. I can take out a 2. And then when I want to solve, that 2 is just going to go away because I can divide both sides by 2, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So I need to solve for this. I notice that this is a perfect square, but if I take this square root of 36, I get 6, which does not give me anywhere near the 16. So you have two choices. You can either solve this by completing the square, or you can solve this by using the quadratic formula. Um, on the test, it'll be completely up to you on how you want to work this out. Um, let's do the quadratic formula. Okay, here I've set up my board to do the quadratic formula. I've got my a is 1, my b is negative 6, and my c is negative 36. 
I go ahead and start substituting my values into the formula. Remember that since this is a word problem, we only want real values, we want no imaginary numbers. Okay, I've simplified that row there down to this one. can break 400 up into 4 times 100, which are both perfect squares. So a 2 will come out, and a 10 will come out. Or you could just think of this as 20 times 20 divided by 2. So it's going to look like 16 plus or minus 20 over 2. So I need to figure out which one of these values will work for us. So I set them up into two separate equations. So I get x equals 16 plus 20 over 2 or 16 minus 20 over 2. Well, 16 minus 20 is going to give me a negative number. Um, the speed of a river can't be negative. So here I get 36 divided by 2 and that will be our answer which is 18 miles per hour okay so the the current or the still water um, current of the river for this problem would be 18 miles per hour so this is exactly like a problem from number uh, from chapter 6 but because of the way that it works out we have to use the quadratic formula or um, completing the square to work this one out.